Chapter 39 With the stealth of Cheetah, the agility of Katana, and the confidence of Wonder Woman, Barbara silently crept up behind Granny and got into position. She unfurled a bat computer cable and lassoed the old lady's ankles, bringing her crashing down. Granny roared and, in a fit of anger, twisted the cable with her bare hands until it snapped. This gave Supergirl enough time to pull a flagpole out of the ground and fly to the terrace. As Barbara distracted Granny, Supergirl bent the steel pole and wrapped it securely around the old lady. Granny struggled against the metal binding, dropping her cookie jar. Slowly, it rolled over to the very edge of the terrace and teetered back and forth, threatening to fall. Supergirl held her breath. Barbara gasped. Granny's face lit up. When that hits the ground, kaboom! Granny Goodness boasted. My cookie jar has the capacity to destroy the entire city of Metropolis and even a few of the suburbs. Then Granny puffed out her cheeks and blew the cookie jar off the ledge. Supergirl raced to stop the cookie jar bomb before it hit the ground. Just as she was about to grab it, someone else got there first. Wonder Woman, Supergirl shouted. That's me. Wonder Woman confirmed. Both friends smiled, but seconds later, their smiles disappeared. The jar began to beep, slowly at first, then faster and faster. It's going to explode, Babs cried. Without hesitation, Supergirl grabbed the cookie jar from Wendy. She tucked it under her arm and soared straight up, ignoring Barbara and Wonder Woman yelling, No, Supergirl, no! Never in her life had Supergirl been so scared or so sure of what she had to do. As she pierced the clouds, the beeping grew louder and faster, and planet Earth got smaller. Supergirl pushed herself past her limits, rocketing out of the Earth's atmosphere. And then, when the lights on the bomb turned red, she tossed the cookie jar with all her might into the emptiness of space. The explosion was huge. For the first time since her escape from Krypton, Supergirl was at peace. Though her hair was practically standing upright, her heart was beating fast and strong. At last, Supergirl knew what it meant to be a superhero. Turning around, Supergirl took her time heading back to Earth, passing through the rain of cookies and stardust that littered the sky. She could hear crying as she neared Superhero High. What had happened, she wondered. Had they lost the battle? As she got closer, cries turned to cheers. When Hawk Girl pointed up and yelled, It's her! Supergirl lives! Supergirl saved the day! Cyborg called out. Smile, Supergirl! Harley yelled, training her camera on her. Everyone was ecstatic. Even Cheetah was heard saying, I always knew she had it in her. As she was carried on the shoulders of her fellow supers, she saw Bumblebee with Mr. Grodd. I have to keep saying it. I am so sorry, Bumblebee was saying. I should never have accused you of being anything but a good gorilla. Barbara cut in to say, Vice Principal Grodd, you saved my life. Embarrassed, the gorilla tried to shake off their apologies and compliments, but he reluctantly relented and awkwardly let them hug him. Principal Waller, Wonder Woman, Barbara Gordon, and Supergirl gathered in the boom tube's room. Granny and four of her furies were secured in handcuffs as Beast Boy, who had turned into a fierce dog, guarded them and the many tiny parries who were tumbling around and playing in hamster cages. With a hard yank on the lever, Waller sent them all to the Bell Rev Penitentiary and Juvenile Detention Center. You can never stop Dark Side, Granny's voice echoed through the boom tube's portal until there was silence. Wait a minute, where's Big Barda? Waller asked. I'll find her, Supergirl volunteered. 
Using her x-ray vision, she scanned the school and was surprised by what she saw. Barda! Supergirl hollered, walking slowly toward her, ready for anything. Big Barda was gently picking up a sculpture that had fallen to the ground during the battle. She placed it securely back on its pedestal. That's all well and good, Barda, Supergirl said softly, but it's time to go. Big Barda did not put up a fight. In silence, the two walked side by side back to the boom tubes. When they got there, Grodd picked up a superhero high brochure and slipped it to Barda. Some reading material for your ride to Bel Rev, he said with a wink. Barda looked down at the brochure and shook her head. Something tells me you could have done a lot more damage than you did, Supergirl told her. Maybe after paying for your crimes, you'll see a way to use your power for good, to help your friends. Barda scowled and said bitterly, I don't have friends. Supergirl smiled warmly. It may seem that way for now, she said. I was alone when I arrived here as well. You might come around to seeing what Earth has to offer, like I did. Unlikely, Barda said sullenly. This place is terrible. Supergirl noticed that Big Barda was holding tight to the brochure. After Principal Waller sent Big Barda through the same boom tubes portal Granny Goodness and her Furies used to get to the Bell Rev Detention Center, the heroes of Superhero High began to scatter. Before she left, Barbara pressed something into the palm of Supergirl's hand. Supergirl looked down to see the familiar warm glow of her crystal and reattached it to her necklace, where it belonged. Are you here to help me seal the boom tube's door once and for all? Principal Waller asked. They were the only two left. Supergirl nodded. But first, there's something I'd like to ask you. What is it? said Waller. Supergirl looked serious. May I see the Krypton portal? The wall stood silent and then said in an uncharacteristically kind voice, Supergirl? You know there's nothing there. The planet was completely destroyed. Supergirl nodded. I know, but I need to see it for myself. Waller nodded and stepped aside. Supergirl took a deep breath and slowly walked toward the Krypton portal and lifted the black cloth that covered it. After staring for a long while, she finally said, you were right. There's nothing left. The pain in her heart was searing. Everything is gone. Her voice was trembling. Everything was destroyed when my planet exploded. Not everything, Waller said. There's something that wasn't destroyed. Something very valuable that meant a lot to your parents. Supergirl's eyes were moist. Though she could lift mountains, outrun trains, and fly faster than a comet, she couldn't stop her tears from flowing. What is it? She asked. What could possibly be left? You, Waller said. Supergirl, as long as you are here, so is Krypton. It lives on in your mind, in your heart, and in your deeds. Though the portal was dark, Supergirl could hear her mother saying, Always do your best, Kara, and you'll be fine. I promise. Waller walked Supergirl to another portal. They could see Korrigar Academy in session. Well? she asked. Supergirl took a deep breath and faced Waller. I've seen enough. Now it's time for me to get back to school. This school. Superhero High is where I belong. I have a lot to learn, and there's no better time to start than right now. <laughs>